Hello and welcome everybody to the Ukrainian Connection. I, of course, am your host, Sarah Snell Cook. I'm here today with Brian Cass, who is the True Stage Senior Vice President of Corporate Development, as well as True Stage Adventures. Welcome. Sarah, great to be here with you today. Yeah, awesome to be here because I know you always have exciting stuff to say. Um, so what we're really focused on uh, is next week, you're going to be going to Money 2020, which starts on the 27th in Vegas. Yay. Um, what stays in, what happens in Vegas <laughs> does not stay in Vegas in this in this um, context, but explain the event to crane leaders who may not know about it and why they should be going there. Yeah, so... I kind of equate Money 2020 to the Super Bowl of banking technology. So this is by far the largest banking technology in the U.S. Um, and and perhaps globally. And so, you know, what what you see here is you have sort of the latest technologies um, that are being introduced to the market. You have a lot of thought leaders that are coming to talk about you know, sort of the evolution of, of the banking industry. And, and so I really encourage credit union leaders at some point to, to go out, um, participate in the event. Um, you know, I think it can be very eye-opening to credit union leaders. Um, I know a lot of credit union folks go to credit union conferences, but, you know, that can create kind of an echo chamber. Uh, those are important, but I think also seeing what's going on outside of the credit union industry is, is really important. And um, I looked a few days ago just to, at uh, the attendees um, at the event. And, and yeah, I mean, they typically draw between, you know, anywhere from 10 to 13, 14,000 people. I, I counted less than 100 credit union industry leaders attending that event. So um, I, to me, that's a concern because, again, the world's moving faster than ever on the technology front. Um, so I think having you know, leaders go out there uh, at Money 2020 actually is kind of curating a track for credit union leaders, which kind of led to the panel that that uh, we're going to be um, uh, involved with out at Money 2020 uh, with some of the top credit union executives uh talking about our quest to hit 1 billion members globally. Yeah, so I wanted to ask you about that. Before we get started on the actual content of the of the panel, I wanted to ask you, what do you feel it means that credit unions are front and center at an event like 20, uh, Money 2020, which, like you said, tens more than 10,000 people attending? I mean, the credit union industry is such a huge segment of the U.S. financial services market, a growing portion of the global banking services market. And again, that's why I just feel it's so important for credit union leaders to, to really go uh, and see how quickly the the pace of change is, is occurring in the market. Um, you know, one of my bigger concerns for the industry as a whole is that sort of the population of credit union members is continuing to age each year. So how do we attract the next generation of credit union members? How do we deliver member experiences in a digital way? And, and so much of that really is going to rely, I think, on partnering with fintech companies that, that can offer technology and experiences that will resonate with a broader segment of the US population. And it's not just young people, it's People of all ages now really, I think, are becoming more comfortable with, you know, kind of that seamless digital transition. I think the other thing that's really powerful is that technology can enable a credit union to really um, execute on its mission. There are so many companies out there now that can help a credit union reach maybe underserved or overlooked segments of the market that could create you know, tremendous credit union members, um, but the technology combined with the mission of credit unions, I think is is a really powerful combination. Oh, absolutely. Um, especially with that younger generation, as you said, and that is the one of the biggest threats to credit unions is the aging of the membership. We need to get the message out there. Credit unions always talk about that, but actually do it. Uh, get the message out there that they're here to stay and uh, really great uh, institutions to to bank with. Um, so as you mentioned, you're gonna be doing this panel, CEOs take center stage. 
on the quest for 1 billion members. At a high level, tell me what you and your panel are going to be talking about um, for the for the audience at uh, Money 2020. Yeah, so there was a recent um, study that was released, a report from uh, the World Council of Credit Unions, um, looking at kind of where the credit union industry sits today. We've we've passed the 400 million member mark globally. You know, in the U.S., I think the latest stats I've seen is we're, we're over 140 million members. So I think we're well on our way to hitting that billion dollar uh, billion member mark. I, I think with the panel here, we want to focus on how do we then continue that growth trajectory. Um, the the CEOs we have uh, Derek Kuhlman, who's the or Dietrich Kuhlman from CEO of Navy Federal, uh, Bill Cheney from Schools First, Jennifer Oliver at, at Rise uh, Credit Union. So some very influential leaders. I think that have been very successful in finding that winning combination for growth. Uh, in with their credit unions. But, you know, I would say there's kind of the the flip side of that coin. A lot of credit unions are, are not growing. They're, you know, um, shrinking in size, struggling to, you know, continue their operations. And so, you know, let's look at the lessons um, uh, in, in playbooks that some of the very successful credit unions have been able to follow. Let's talk about ways that technology can help smaller to mid-sized credit unions um, reverse maybe a downward uh, trajectory and growth to reach new members, um, to be more cost efficient, um, uh, to deliver the better digital experiences. And so we'll be kind of talking uh, a lot about that. I think when you look at the opportunity of technology to um, enable credit unions to grow globally, uh, I think that the uh, there are over 7 billion smartphones in the world today in a population of 8 billion. Uh, I, I think close to 70% of, uh, of um, people on this planet have a smartphone in their pocket. That means every credit union, you know, 70% of the, the population could have access to a credit union through that smartphone. So I think the technology is really going to be the key of how do we reach the next 500 million people around the globe? How do we grow credit union membership in the U.S. to 200 million? Mm -hmm. um, I think the other thing that's, again, an exciting opportunity is that, you know, credit unions don't have shareholders that they need to answer to. You know, credit unions can invest to the future. Um, in a way that that maybe a lot of the competitors in this space are unable to do. But, you know, it's going to require um, certainly a lot of uh, ingenuity and it's going to require, you know, for some folks getting out of their comfort zone, um, maybe reevaluating the way that, that credit unions have have you know kind of operated uh, relying very heavily on the, ran uh, the branch and, and people coming in to kind of experience that great uh, member service. There's ways you can still offer great member service digitally um, uh, to build on kind of the values of credit unions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I know as a, a an old Gen Xer, uh, <laughs> as, as well as the ignored generation, but uh, uh, I, I did my, I'm on the board of my credit union and the people on the front line didn't even know who <laughs> because I never went in the branch. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> um so so from your perspective as a as a senior vice president at True Stage and and the ventures um what is your vision for the future of these ventures within True Stage that you're looking at but also how will they pr help propel credit unions forward? Yeah, so really uh, at True Stage Ventures, um, we've been actively investing in fintech companies now for uh, eight years and really focused on companies that we see can address technology needs of credit unions or that have um, services or solutions that a credit union can offer to their membership. And you know, really, I think the, the key kind of North Star of the, the venture fund that we have you know, is really looking at how do we ensure credit unions stay relevant and competitive in this rapidly changing world. Um, 
you know, I talk about uh, JP Morgan Chase having a technology budget that's nearly double the entire credit union industry combined. So, you know, the days of being able to kind of build maybe some of your own solutions um, and have kind of the, uh, you know, the core technology needed to just keep the lights on doesn't work in today's world. Um, yeah. And really, I think the only way that credit unions are going to be able to to kind of stay competitive on that front is through these partnerships. And so um, we've invested uh, now in over 60 companies um, and really are focusing on how do we kind of create this ecosystem um, to connect credit unions with fintechs. So mm -hmm. investing only tells part of the story. We want to now kind of um, help credit unions dip their toe in the water, help them navigate a market in which we have over 10,000 fintech companies in North America mm -hmm. alone. So a lot of credit unions, like, I don't even know where to start. Exactly. Can you help me? Um, and, and so we spend a lot of time, you know, talking to credit unions, helping them identify maybe some of their key pain points, you know, where do they want to grow and then help match them with companies that, that we've seen that can help achieve those goals. Yeah, and especially right now, strategic planning and budgeting time is the time to be really That's, thinking about what you're going to invest in. And like you said, I think technology is probably one of the most, I would say the most, but you know, potentially one of the most uh, important areas where you really need to put the money toward uh, and not just cybersecurity, which of course is important, but <laughs> yeah, that's uh, probably a topic uh, for another discussion. Yes. But I think you know when when you look at a lot of the um, unique partnerships that have evolved between credit unions and fintechs, you know, a lot of times it's like, oh, this is just going to be an expense out the door. But you know, a lot of credit unions have been able to achieve massive ROIs on those investments. There are fintech companies out there that you know can enable that actually can create non-interest income for a credit union. So it's a revenue source versus uh, an expense item. Um, so there's there's just so many different flavors out there, uh, so many different ways that credit unions can partner. And, mm -hmm. and again, I think a common theme of, of of those credit unions that have achieved you know significant growth is they have a healthy mix of you know, again, delivering a great experience in their branches, but combining it with, um, you know, good technology, good partnerships, sort of a team that that has developed a strategy to leverage these fintech relationships um, to help achieve that growth. Yeah, and that's, you mentioned something super important for credit to also kind of change their feelings and thoughts about is non-interest income. Obviously, mm -hmm. Washington is coming after it. Um, but there are services that add value that you can charge fees for versus being punitive uh, fees for overdrafts and things like that. Yeah, they, they can. I mean, there's so many, um, you know, really interesting companies out there that address, you know, financial wealth um, uh, and can, you know, grow the member experience in a way that actually generates non-interest income for the credit union while delivering a very valuable service or mm -hmm. offering to the member. And um, yeah, I definitely encourage credit unions to kind of keep that on, on the, you know, their horizon. Credit unions have a tremendous amount of trust between, you know, the credit union and the member and, you know, are there solutions where they can deepen that relationship with the member, expand it beyond, you know, maybe one or two products, you know, we hear a lot about that, like, you know, how do we build um, and, and deepen the, the breadth of the relationship? And again, many of these technologies are, are really good at that. That's, uh, you mm -hmm. know, kind of, they built a whole company around mm -hmm. that key objective. Right. And that's how Dave is stealing their members. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's um, right. <laughs> so, um, and then on the flip side, uh, the, opposite revenue, you know, some of the time savings, that investment is not an expense, I think. It's an investment. Um, you know, if you're saving your staff several hours a day, you know, or whatever it is by processing mortgage 
paperwork and things like that, yes. then you don't have to have add headcount later down the road. Um, or if, you know, the housing market goes down, you don't have to um, lay off people. You just turn your bots back, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, I think that the less sexy part, but also very important is the, is the efficiencies that these technologies provide also. Yeah. And that gets really to the cost side of the equation is that again, I think for credit unions to be able to compete, it's not just kind of the front end member experience, but we have to be able to operate, you know, our, our, our credit unions in a cost effective way so that we can remain competitive with our interest rates, keep the, the, you know, the, the lights on. Yes. And if all of the competition is, you know, deploying, you know, artificial intelligence and different sort of robotic process automation. Um, it's going to be very hard for for credit unions over the next five, 10, 15 years to to be at the same kind of cost scale as as others. And yeah, I think a lot of times people think, oh, automation equals job elimination. And and I think it's more of like, well, we can redeploy, you know, employees to to different functions that that can be performed just as well, but at a fraction of the cost, we can now focus, you know, efforts on, on member, you know, retention, member engagement, you know, doing some things differently. Um, and it's going to translate, should translate into a larger credit union that's going to enable the credit union to bring on more employees, but uh, on a more profitable. Um, right. More level. valuable it, uh, yes. work, more human work. Um, yes. So I'm going to get back to the panel a little bit. Well, we strayed a bit, but uh, get a little bit closer to the panel. Um, so what is this billion dollar objective or billion, excuse me, I did it too. It's this billion member objective. What is the role in FinTech there? Because you did touch on it a little bit earlier. How do they help us add members? Yeah, I, again, I, I think where technology really comes into play is one, again, I think it is through the smartphone. Um, I, I think that will enable credit unions to to reach um, markets that you know might be more difficult to do through a traditional uh, you know um, creation of branches. I, I think the other uh, really interesting thing with technology is that it enables um, financial institutions to offer certain products that might not have been. Um, uh, that would have been cost prohibitive to do. So I look at like micro lending. This is sort of a um, you know an emerging area. Uh, you know, cer certain markets have have been doing micro lending for a long time. But you know, how do you provide uh, you know a fifty dollar loan to somebody and do it in a cost effective way? And and to do it in a traditional way, you know, it's really not possible. But you know, leveraging technology where there's just a high amount of automation um, that that again can reach a, a a person that that might not otherwise have access to anything, um, and, and do so in a way that that you know uh, is cost effective it is really key. I think um, you know there's there's financial education, there's you know different savings tools out there. Um, that that again can be implemented and and distributed through technology to such a large segment of the population that I I think that's got to play a key role in hitting that billion dollar the billion member <laughs> level. We've already hit a billion dollars a few times, I think. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I love the part you mentioned uh, micro loans. That is something that you know, obviously can be very cost prohibitive. What what kind of interest can you charge or what kind of fees can you charge on a $50 loan? But, um, you know, there are technologies out there that can make it happen, not only cost effective for the credit union, but also for the member um, uh, who just needs to get groceries that day, you know? Absolutely. So many of those, those individuals have to rely on more predatory uh, options because that's the only option that's out there and and when you look at the the growing number of you know underbanked and unbanked consumers in the US market and, and globally you know they don't have the opportunity to even start to build credit 
but a lot of these these um, technologies that I'm, I'm talking about, you know, they're tracking payments, they're developing a credit history, they're helping that person um, develop a credit report so that they can, um, you know, maybe it's microloans, and then you're able to get your first credit card, which then enables you to, you know, someday kind of get a more traditional loan, but it, it has to start somewhere. And, and that technology is, is, you know, something that didn't necessarily exist, at least not at sort of the scale and reach that it does today versus say 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. And, and going back to the, the microloan um, example, that's some, I, I read somewhere, I think it's like 75% of microloan takers, microloan borrowers are actually Gen Z and millennials. So, you know, that just that one example can help credit unions um, get younger, hopefully. <laughs> that's yeah, that's right. What a great opportunity to, you know, provide a, a lifeline to that that younger consumer that can be then translated into a member and you're kind of with them as they, you know, kind of um, uh, enter out into the world and and um, you can create a lifelong membership right. through, through a microloan. Yes, it's yeah. not instant right. gratification necessarily, but if you're looking at the long game, that is exactly what credit unions are here to do is to serve those underserved folks and people with uh, second chances for low, low credit scores or no, no credit score. Um, so yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunity there for credit unions to really um, get younger. I think uh, Denise Weimar, give her a little shout out, used to use the term euthanize. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's an interesting way to, to phrase it yeah <laughs> spelled youth <laughs> right with a y uh, <laughs> uh yeah not the other way around so um <laughs> brian as you know i typically give my audience or excuse me i i always give my guest a uh opportunity to share their final thoughts at the end here so talk about a lot of stuff uh, what say you, what's your final word of wisdom for our credit union audience? Yeah. I mean, I think just kind of with the, the theme of, you know, kind of being on the, the eve of money 2020, you know, I encourage everybody next year to, to really take a hard look at it. If you're out there, uh, at it's in Las Vegas, um, you know, to, to kind of open, open your eyes to, to different ways of, of engaging with, uh, with your members. Um, and if you have, you know, uh, you know, maybe you're a little on the fence around whether or not to, to partner with fintechs, you know, I think True States Ventures um, would be a great opportunity. We're always here to kind of help uh, have conversations with credit unions. Um, so always want to just kind of, you know, make sure our, our door is open to those conversations for those um, who are interested. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brian, for joining us today. Appreciate it. Thank you, Sarah.